everyone, I'm Holly, and in this video, I am making a delightfully scented lilac soap. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add in the coconut milk. I had made quite a few animal milk soaps, so it's time to get back to some vegan options. And I'm gonna go ahead and blend that into the base oils. My oils are a blend of olive and coconut, cocoa butter and castor. It's just my favorite blend. Gonna add in my lye solution now, and I have almost zero lilint on it today, which is nice. Temperature is fairly consistent up here today. Sometimes I start cold and have to work to get it warmed up, but today it was already pretty warm. I'm going to bring this to emulsification and then split it off into other containers. I need to burp the stick blender. We'll try that. I'm going to be adding in the fragrance separately. I want to go ahead and get these colored first. I need to go to the 3000 marker on here. I know I say ML, but somebody asked me once, why do I do that? Well, because I don't usually use this uh, system for measuring. So to me, ML was just ML, but apparently you're supposed to say mils. So I don't know. I'm going to the 3,000 mark on these pictures. I can't even see it that direction. I can go this way. So let's see that one. So I just made a rainbow batch, and so I know what amounts I need here, which was nice. Because the lilac is such an accelerator, I don't want to just add it all in at once. So I'm gonna kinda just do a, a layered design. It's not gonna be straight layers. I'm not shooting for that at all. All right, we'll let this one go a little bit higher. It'll be our base color. This is one nice way. I guess we'll see how it turns out, but typically this is a nice way to work with something that really accelerates. So we'll just see what happens since I've never used this one before. All right, into this one here on the end, I want it to be kind of a darker purple, and this I want to be a, a lighter purple. Let's mix that up and see. Let's go with this one first and see if this light color is gonna be good enough. Whoa, looks like it's going to be plenty. That looks good. This is Pow Pow Purple from Mad Micah's Definitely one of my new favorite colors. I have a little bit of Snow White mixed up, so I think I'll just put some in there, and then the rest will go into this one. It's kind of fun to work with a kind of a whiter color without it having water in it. All right, so let's see how this purple is going to turn out. Hopefully, Oh yes, quite a bit darker than this one. I was sure hoping that it would pack a punch here and it certainly does. Nice, it's very pretty. And then we have this medium color. That's very pretty. And then let's see what happens here if this whitens it very much. 
Yeah, that's pretty decent. Still kind of has a yellowy tone to it, but I think I'll go with it because I was already kind of thinking of kind of like an antique lilac. So I think that's fine. I think this is going to be beautiful. Beautiful indeed. All right, so supposedly this goes really well. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and get my stick blender in and the air bubbles. All right, so let's go. Let's see what happens. Lilacs tend to rise. They tend to accelerate. Now this is looking wonderful. Now here's the thing. This um, lilac, I'm only using it at 2% because um, the usage rate on it is 2.10%. So that's something to keep in mind if you are a person that is a maker that is using fragrances. They are changing usage rates right now. Um, across all the suppliers because the International Fragrance Association has their 49th Amendment. I also saw a 50th Amendment at uh, uh, Nature's Garden, I thought. So I'm not quite sure what that is all about, but I noticed it's very strong. The fragrances that have really low usage rates, like almonds and ambers and did I say that right? The fragrances that have low usage rates, um, they tend to be really strong. So this is going well. Look at this. Now, I don't remember if this is a straight up lilac. I don't think it is. It's very beautiful. It smells amazing. Well, I guess I could have done something different. Um, it really does smell great. Now there's going to be some lilac purists out there. I've gotten, uh, well, confronted about it, I guess, before. <laughs> um, most of the lilacs are blends, but I, I really, I really like them. So look at this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was totally going to do something else, but I decided not to. I thought, you know what? This is lilac. This is not going to make any sense but I probably could have and I think a lot of it has to do with that super low usage rate and some people in the comments did say it accelerated for them I suspect there are people that have not paid attention to usage rates and just went with the one ounce per pound of oil situation that doesn't work you have to pay attention to usage rates so I suspect that's what happened here for some people, but wow, this is delightful. This is a very, very beautiful lilac. I mean, you're not going to be like, what is this? Is it lilac? I can't tell. It is lilac. If you know what a lilac smells like, you're going to say this is lilac. Lilac is my all-time favorite flower. And where we grew up, where I grew up, I'm the only one in this house that grew up there. <laughs> in Montana, we had just an epic lilac. I think we had a, at least two or three. I'm not fully remembering. Anyway, we had amazing lilacs. And I just love them and I never really got to have much in Missouri this is not working for me try this um never really had much for lilacs in Missouri and we planted a rather small lilac but we had planted it this was in our house at um outside Kansas City in Belton and we had um we planted just a really small lilac bush over some 
trees that we'd taken out and their roots were there, well, they must have provided a lot of nutrients because best lilac ever. It grew so big that it was in front of my living room window and that was uh, pretty high because it was one of those uh, split level type houses. Any who's it, let's move on. I was very sad to leave that lilac behind. Just one of my absolute favorites. So five years ago, we were living down here. Five years ago, we went to back to Montana. I had, I've only been to Montana twice since I left in 1995, which is very sad, but anywho, it's five years ago almost. We went back, first time my kids had been there and um it was lilac season i couldn't even believe it i was the happiest camper i was legit in my rv too but i was a happy camper they're huge in montana they're just like super tall they were everywhere i remember going through our lee and that's um on 93 between missoula and ronan where i grew up Oh my gosh, Arlie and Rivali and through there. Oh, it's just amazing. Just straight up amazing. And there was a lot by the lake at Flathead and Polson. And we would drive back and forth and just the scent wafting out. We had the lilac. We had the pine tree, and then you had that lake air. Mm, I wish I could bottle that up. All right, so I'm gonna try to flood it on because I don't really want to have it sink in so much as I want to just make a little design. This is leaning a hint towards a gray. I think it's gonna be all right. I mean, it definitely looks, on the monitor, it's looking a little bit more lavendery lilac-y colored. So I have planted some lilacs here. And they're kind of doing all right, but they're not blowing me away yet. It seems I'll probably move about the time they get large and super fantastic. All right, going to kind of texture this part again. I took some time to clean up my stick blender because I want it to be clean since this last layer is kind of like a whitish layer. I don't know if anybody else uses the um, craft paper, the freezer paper. It sure does make a lot of like stains. Like I get a little bit more seepage with this than I did with the white freezer paper. I don't know if it's just more visible, but my molds are definitely getting a little bit oil splotched way more than they ever have before by using this particular freezer paper. All right, so this is my recipe as is. It's just sitting here being happy. It is a thicker trace. It's still quite workable after all this time. It's It's been quite a while here, me messing around with all of this. I'm so being cool, about 65 degrees today. I think my, that's the room temperature, and I'm pretty sure this was at room temperature by the time I got started. Um, it was a little bit warmer in the 70s there for a while, but that was before I even started my last batch, which was a rainbow, so. Nice. Well, this is probably the happiest batch of lilac soap I've ever made. I did do one for the farmhouse, I think it was last year, so it was just a solid color and it, it went pretty well doing it that way also. But as far as having time to really color and work with a batch, this is amazing. All right, let's put on this final layer. Oh, it's beautiful. 
I just can't even. I have been having a really good run at soap making recently. So last week I made figgy cream and flannel and amber. Those really turned out nicely. I'm not kind of fully geared up making soap yet this year. Um, I'm kind of taking it a hint slower, a little bit easier this year so far. I may really amp it up, but for now, I'm just trying to take it easy on my old self. Have fun. I've been making more bath bombs and I had a scrub in there not too long ago and etc. So I'm just kind of having fun. But I do have a long list of soaps to make. I'm very excited to make them as well. I was originally thinking that I was going to drizzle some of the purple mica on the top. And then I realized it was pretty much just going to be the same design as my figgy cream on top. So I decided I wasn't going to do that. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. I, I'm... I'm feeling the need for it to stay somewhat simple though on top. I feel like as makers, we spend a lot of time sometimes on the top. I personally, real, I realize that I really don't pay much attention to the top of soaps after, after it's out of this particular situation. This kind of has, so it has kind of allowed me just to ease up a little bit on you know, trying to decide what I'm going to do on the top. Knowing me though, that means my next batch will probably have just the wildest top because it seems like whenever I say stuff like that, I end up <laughs> going against my own statement. I just roll with the punches and if I'm inspired to do something, by golly, that's just what I do. So I think I'm just gonna leave this plain. I just, I'm seeing just a very subtle, just a cute little layered soap, classic lilac scent, and I just think this is going to be perfect for it. This is really gorgeous. I'm very pleased with how this batch has turned out. I think I am just going to stop here and I will see you back here for the cut. I'm really excited to see what it looks like. I'm back to cut the lilac soap. I feel like it couldn't have turned out better for my vision. The top is a little bit of like a creamy, uh, oops, oops. Um, it's a creamy light yellow color, um, but I think it's fine. Don't really notice any discoloration in the purple. I'm really pleased with it. Now, like I said in the video, the making, it's not the, it's not a straight 100% lilac. It's a little hard here. Um, it is a blend and lilac is the prominent note. If somebody smells it, they're going to be like, yep, that's lilac. My daughter actually came upstairs to, I'm wanting to make soap for my teenagers and so I wanted to see what kind of fragrance my daughter wanted and while she was up here, I said, hey, give this one a sniff. And she was like, oh, it's such a good lilac. So it is a lilac, but it's not 100% lilac. It's intended to be lilac and I think you will be pleased with the lilac if you like lilac, so. Plus every lilac is smells a little bit different. I love the lilacs we had in Montana. Now the ones I have around here right now 
in this house, at this house, not in my house, but at this house. They're a little different variety, a little uh, smaller of a flower. And so they have just a little bit of a different fragrance, I think. I love the uneven layers. You know I love to make layered soaps, but I also like a kind of a messy haphazard layer as well. These are the other two soaps sitting on my curing rack right now. So we have figgy cream here and flannel and amber, both obviously. Very stripey, very straight layers. I love a straight layered soap too. Spring is definitely popping around here. My daffodils did not bloom again this year. They they get there, they're like, you're like, come on, you can do it, Daffy's. They're like, they're so close. They're yellow and like poofy and they're just like, Bleh. okay, well, we're done. We showed up. They're very, <laughs> they don't have a lot of motivation apparently for the, the spring season. I had, I had hopes this year that they would go ahead and do their thing, but they did not. But all the, the red buds are starting to pop and the grass is as green as could be. We've already started mowing and where storms are coming. Have some wicked wind today. We don't have storms today, just the wicked wind. Apparently it may snow overnight. Whatever, I don't know any more of this country. I mean, it was 75 the other day. Gonna snow tomorrow. Whatever, I guess. Looks like I have a little something on my wire. I don't know if you can see it, but it picked it up on that cut and drug it through. I think it's so squeaky every now and again. I don't get it. I planted some radishes and some spinach and some peas and what else they my kids mostly helped me do the planting and then i have some seeds going indoors as well we have carrot not carrots <laughs> tomatoes and all some peppers and all manner of delightful things we've got my garden all worked and ready to go we did a little bit of changing to it this year so I'm really excited for the weather to warm up for good so that we can get the rest of the garden planted. I bought some flowers from Floret. Oh, what's the rest of it? Floret Farms. Oh, shoot. I was not able to get dahlias because I was a little late to the party on the seed release, but I got some Cosmos and some Zinnias, and I was really excited to plant them. And I really, really want to plant some Dollies, so I definitely need to be a little faster. I also follow, I think it's Triple Wren Farms. I thought they were going to have some seeds too, but honest to goodness, I'm not paying close enough attention to these things. So I kind of, even though I've signed up for newsletters, I don't always, I don't always catch them. So what are you excited about planting this year? And have you planted things already? So here we have the lilac soap for this year. It's so pretty, it smells amazing. I love purple. I love purple so much. All right guys, thanks so much for watching and happy spring.